Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation and welcome to The Hive. In this video, we're going to take a look at this Nortec USB Zigbee and Z-Wave stick and how we can integrate it into Home Assistant to talk to Zigbee and Z-Wave accessories without the need for proprietary hubs like the IKEA Tradfree Bridge, the Xiaomi Hub, or even a Philips Hue Bridge. We'll even pair one of these IKEA five button remotes to Home Assistant using this USB stick and use that to turn some lights on and off that aren't even IKEA lights. And we'll also explore a new way to get hold of pre-written automations to make our life a little simpler. So let's get started. Before we start, we need to discuss what Zigbee and Z-Wave are. Both Zigbee and Z-Wave are low power wireless mesh networking protocols, which are very popular in uh, building automation, especially in battery powered sensors, buttons, and other accessories. Because they use mesh networking, each additional accessory that you add has the ability to extend the range of your Zigbee or Z-Wave network, which is really quite nice in a larger home. The key differences between Z-Wave and Zigbee are the frequencies that they operate in. Uh, Zigbee operates predominantly in the 2.4 gigahertz band, which can be a bit congested with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, whereas Z-Wave operates predominantly in the 908 megahertz band, which tends to not have so much contention. Additionally, Z-Wave is a proprietary standard while Zigbee is open source, making it cheaper for manufacturers to integrate. Zigbee is in a lot of smart devices like Philips Hue, IKEA Trad Free, Xiaomi Akara accessories, and many more. Z-Wave shows up in some ADT, Vivint alarm systems, and I've seen some other smart accessories from Aotech that use Z-Wave like light globes and smart plugs, but I'm yet to see any compelling reason to try them out. I'll take a look one day. So this little USB key allows us to integrate both technologies into Home Assistant and use Home Assistant as our central hub instead of needing to use proprietary hubs. In the case of IKEA Tradfree, it expands our options by letting us use the IKEA remotes to control non-IKEA lights. So let's take a look at how to get that working. I'll go plug this stick into the demo Raspberry Pi and we'll get back in a second to set this up. So now that the USB stick is plugged in, I'm going to go in Home Assistant to Configuration, Integrations, and I'm going to click on Add Integration in the bottom right hand corner, and I'm going to search for ZHA, and I'm going to select Zigbee Home Automation. And in the drop down here, we should have the device, but it doesn't seem to be showing up. So what I'm going to do is go to my supervisor, go to system, and I'm going to reboot to reboot the host. Okay, so Home Assistant has booted back up and I'm going to go to the supervisor, I'm going to go to system, and I just wanna click on this three dot stack here and click hardware. And I want to see, okay, so there we go. We've got the Nortec stick on TTY USB zeros. So now in Home Assistant, I'm going to go to configuration, integrations, add integration. I'm going to type in ZHA and we're going to select Zigbee Home Automation. I'm going to select the device path of slash dev slash TTY USB one and hit submit and it's going to scan that device and hopefully automatically figure out the radio type that's on there and it has and it's figured out that it's a Zigbee coordinator and we can select the area of 
office. Now, if it hadn't automatically detected the radio type, we could have selected that ourselves. So we'll hit office and we'll click finish. So now we have the Zigbee home automation integration there and we can click configure and then we can start configuring devices and entities. So in order to do that, I'm going to grab this IKEA five button remote and I've already popped to the back off. So I've got access to the link button. I'm going to put the remote in pairing mode and I'm going to click on devices in here and I'm going to click on add device. And what I'm going to do now is put this device into pairing mode and it's found the device starting the interview and it's figured out that it is a trad free remote control and we can give it a name and i'll call it ikea five button demo and for now i'll put the area as dining room and we can change that later and it says that the device is ready to use so now if i go to network devices we'll see that we've got ikea five button demo in here and we can drill into there and see the power level um, we can see automation scenes and scripts we can show the Zigbee device signature, manage clusters, etc. There's lots that we can do with that now that we've discovered the device. So now that we've discovered the remote, we need to do something with it. And for that, I'm going to use a blueprint. Blueprints were introduced in the December 2020 release of Home Assistant shortly after the Home Assistant conference and they are one of the most exciting features of the announcement at the conference. Blueprints are a way to share automations amongst the community without uploading a bunch of YAML or needing to edit YAML. Sure, if you want to write a blueprint, you'll need to write YAML, but to use blueprints created by the community, you don't have to worry about it. To get started with Blueprints, you'll need to have updated to Home Assistant version 2020.12.0 at the very least. I've recently updated this demo instance of Home Assistant to 2020.12.2. If you go to the configuration menu and scroll down, you should find blueprints in the menu items here and we'll click on blueprints. If you don't have blueprints, you probably need to update your Home Assistant version. Now we'll see that there are two basic blueprints already available. So there's the motion activated light or a zone notification. What we can do to get more blueprints is click on discover more blueprints and that's going to take us to the Home Assistant Community Blueprints Exchange. There's tons of blueprints available on here and I'm going to do a blueprints deep dive in another video. For now, I'm looking for something for the five button IKEA remote. So I'm going to go to the search bar in the top right and type in ZHA IKEA and return. And what I want to do is I want to take a look at this one here. This ZHA IKEA five button remote for lights is written by Frank Nyhoff or Frank. He is one of the admins and he is the creator of the Home Assistant community pages. So I trust this guy. Frank is also one of the founders of Nabucasa. So we've got this page detailing the blueprint, what it does, and even the code that makes it tick. So what we now need to do is copy this URL, go back over to Home Assistant, and we're going to click on Import Blueprint in the bottom right hand corner. We're going to paste the URL in here, and we can click Preview Blueprint. We can then read the description, and we can even click on this exposure triangle to view the contents of the blueprint. 
I'm pretty happy with that. There's actually quite a lot going on in here. We'll click on Import Blueprint and the blueprint's imported and we've got ZHA IKEA five button remote for lights. So now that that's done, we need to actually create an automation with it. So we'll click on create automation and we get taken straight to the automation, which does look a little bit different to other automations. We can obviously change the name and I'll just put demo at the end there and the blueprint that we're using here and as we scroll through, we need to decide on some things. So what we're going to do first is we're going to choose an IKEA remote to use and we've got IKEA five button demo, which is this one that we paired before. So now that we've selected the remote that we want to use, we now need to select the lights that we want to affect. And there's three different ways that we can do that. We can either pick an area where we turn all of the lights on and off in that particular area. So for example, I could choose the office or I can choose a device. And if I search for Mirabella in here, we can select that. And that's actually what I want to affect is this Mirabella Genio lamp over here or we can specifically pick an entity. So again, light.mirabella, and that's actually what I wanna do is I wanna choose the entity. And we can add multiple entities in here if we like as well. For now, I'm just going to leave it at only the Mirabella. The next couple of rows here are interesting. We can choose to toggle on this force turn on brightness and that actually lets us set a specific brightness for the lights to turn onto when we use the on and off button on the remote instead of it going to whatever it was on last time. And a little bit further down we've got these four optional actions we can populate for the left buttons for short and long press or the right button for short or long press as well. You could use these actions to do things like change color or change color temperature of the lights. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave these actions blank and I'll play around with those in my production instance. Once we're done, we can hit save. And now if we press the on and off button on the IKEA Trad Free Globe, we turn the Mirabella light on and off and we should be able to change the brightness using the up and down buttons on the IKEA Trad Free Remote. So that's my rundown on the Nortec Zigbee Z-Wave HUSBZB1 USB stick. If you're looking to pick one up for yourself, I'll put links in the video description of where you can get them. They may be affiliate links that might help out the channel if you do purchase through those affiliate links. That being said, they may not be affiliate links. I do hope this video has been useful for you on your home automation journey. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button, share it with your friends and family, and if you're looking for more content like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below and then the bell icon so you get notified when I release new videos. Lastly, if you'd like to help the channel out, there's a buy me a coffee link in the video description below. I don't yet have video sponsors, so proceeds from the buy me a coffee link will be put towards creating more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.